Hello, and welcome to the Demoettes series for TIBCO Data Virtualization, or TDV. Demoettes are brief instructional videos that demonstrate specific features of TDV. In this demoette, we discuss caching of stored procedures. Here is our agenda. We begin by defining stored procedure caching and outlining its importance for our customers. Next, we walk through a very basic demo of stored procedure caching. Finally, we summarize the contents of this demoette. Let's begin by discussing what stored procedure caching is and why it is important for our customers. Most stored procedures accept one or more input parameters. Each unique set of input parameter values is called a variant. The TDV stored procedure caching facility will cache the results returned for each variant. If a particular variant is not cached, it will be run against live data the first time it is used. Its results will then be cached and subsequent calls for the same variant will return data from the cache. The number of cached variants is configurable. The default is 32, but it may be set to any number up to 100 million minus 1. When the limit is reached, the least recently used variant is purged from the cache, and the new variant takes its place. Procedure caching can only be done with procedures that accept scalar input parameters. Procedures that use input parameter arrays may not be cached. However, multiple output parameters are supported, including result sets, scalars, or a mix of both. Procedure caching is important to our customers for many reasons. For example, it can provide higher performance for long-running procedures or for stored procedure variants that are frequently accessed by many users. It can also be important when connections to live data sources are unreliable. Next, let's walk through a very basic demo of procedure caching. Here is the business problem that we illustrate in this demo. This enterprise uses a cloud-based application called Magic 8-Ball to provide customer self-service for help desk issues. The Magic 8-Ball can answer any question. TDV converts the Magic 8-Ball's XML responses to relational result sets, federates other enterprise data, and acts as a virtual database for the customer portal. However, since the Magic 8-Ball is hosted in the cloud, we want to use TDV caching to enhance performance for the most frequently asked questions. You can easily build the artifacts used in this demo from scratch. Users can install the CAR file available in the demo at repository. If you have run this demo previously, make sure that all caches are cleared and disabled before you begin. In this demo, we use the default TDV cache facility, so no external cache database is required. We are ready to begin our demo. First, we create a REST data source for the URL shown here. Now we enter the details of the REST call for the Magic 8-Ball and click the Parse button to create the input parameters. We can now use the Design by Example feature to define the output parameter. Design by Example asks you to fill in the input parameters with example data and then runs the query and analyzes the response. The question parameter must be at least two characters in length and must end with a question mark. For the XML parameter, enter the literal value XML, which is case insensitive. Design by example will present a list of elements in the response. Select Magic 8-Ball Response, which is the top level of the returned XML structure. Name the output parameter Response and save your work. As you can see, an XML schema definition file has automatically been created within our new REST data source. Here is an interesting side note. Note that our repeating group row includes the attribute max occurs equals unbounded. 
This will become very important later in the demo because it helps the transformation editor understand that this is a repeating construct that can be included in a loop and transformed to a cursor. However, if your XML only returns one row of data, the design by example feature will not realize that a potential repeating group is present. If this happens, you can manually add the max occurs equals unbounded to the definition file. This will ensure that you can later transform the construct to a relational cursor. This is the case for the Magic 8-Ball application, so you must add the max occurs parameter as shown here. Now we can execute the web service operation, and an answer is returned in XML format. Next, we can use the TDV Studio Any-to-Any -any Transformation Editor to transform the XML from the Magic 8-Ball into a relational cursor. We now have the Magic 8-Ball answer in a relational structure that can be used in any TDV view or procedure. By now, you will have noticed, though, that each call to the Magic 8-Ball typically takes a few seconds. Let's use caching to improve performance. A transformation is a type of procedure in TDV, so this is a good starting point for our survey of procedure caching. We'll use the TDV default cache, so all we have to do is click Enable and Save. The cache status is not loaded because we have not yet executed and stored our first variant. Here we see the location of the cache data source and the specific table for our transformation. At the bottom of the caching tab, the Advanced panel shows the setting for the maximum number of variants to be stored before the least recently used algorithm goes into effect. Now when we execute the transform, the variant is cached. Go to the specified caching table and you will see the metadata and cached result. The input parameters that define the variant are stored in the cache status table for the cache data source. Now execute the transformation again using the same parameters. You will see that it runs much faster because it is using the cache instead of calling the external web service. You can repeat this test with new parameters. The first execution for a new question will be slow, and subsequent requests using the same question will be faster, thanks to the cache. Caching a transformation is one option for procedure caching. Next, let's look at caching for SQL scripts. These scripts will make use of our transformation, so before proceeding, be sure to clear and disable the transformation cache and save your work. Here is a simple SQL script we want to cache. It accepts an input parameter that represents a question for the Magic 8-Ball. It plugs this question into a call to the Magic 8-Ball transformation and returns the answer column as a cursor. Note that the row structure of the cursor must be explicitly defined in order for caching to work. Again, we are using the TDV default cache, so we simply need to enable the cache and save. TDV builds a cache table for us. However, when we execute, an answer comes back, but the cache status remains not loaded. This is the result of a design decision in TDV Studio. When we are running a procedure from Studio, it will not cache results unless we wrap it in a higher level procedure. This wrapper is not required when executing from external clients. It only applies when we are running the procedure from TDV Studio. Let's try a wrapper procedure and see what happens. Here is a simple script that wraps the procedure we are trying to cache. We execute the wrapper script. Now, when we return to the original script, we see that the cache status has changed from not loaded 
to up. We examine the cache table and see that it now contains data. Our wrapper script has solved the problem for us. Remember, the wrapper script is only necessary when you run from Studio. It is not necessary for caching when the script is executed by an external client. Let's pause for a moment to consider the best use cases for procedure caching. Caching works best for procedures that are idempotent, always returning the same result for a given variant. Like any form of caching, procedure caching can be problematic when results change frequently. For example, consider this special feature of the Magic 8-Ball application. If the user asks the question, what time is it? The Magic 8-Ball responds with the current time. If we use caching in this use case, the variant what time is it will continue to return the cached result, which becomes increasingly less accurate with each passing second until such time as the cache is refreshed. For some applications, data latency introduced by caching may be acceptable. In the instance shown here, though, latency is probably not acceptable. Even though caching may not be appropriate for general purpose use of the Magic 8-Ball, there may still be project-specific use cases that could benefit from caching because they do not need to use the time service. For example, this script specifically rejects time questions. Since all other questions return consistent answers, caching is appropriate for this use case. Finally, Let's look at caching for procedures that return more than one output parameter. This script returns three outputs, one cursor and two scalars. If we are not caching, the procedure will return the current time and date as scalars. However, if we turn caching on, it will return the cached time and date, which could provide an indicator to the end user regarding the currency of an answer. When we enable caching for this script, we see that TDV has defined two caching tables, one for the cursor output and a second for all scalar outputs. With caching enabled, we run this procedure from a wrapper script. Our multiple parameter output is returned. Now we examine the caching tables. The first holds the scalar outputs, and the second holds the cursor output. Our demo is complete. Let's summarize what we have seen in this presentation. Most stored procedures accept one or more input parameters. Each unique set of input parameter values is called a variant. The TDV stored procedure caching facility will cache the results returned for each variant. If a particular variant is not cached, it will be run against live data the first time it is used. Its results will then be cached and subsequent calls for the same variant will return data from the cache. The number of cached variants is configurable. The default is 32, but it may be set to any number up to 100 million minus 1. When the limit is reached, the least recently used variant is purged from the cache, and the new variant takes its place. Procedure caching can only be done with procedures that accept scalar input parameters. Procedures that use input parameter arrays may not be cached. However, multiple output parameters are supported, including result sets, scalars, or a mix of both. Procedure caching is important to our customers for many reasons. For example, it can provide higher performance for long-running procedures or for stored procedure variants that are frequently accessed by many users. It can also be important when connections to live data sources are unreliable. Thank you.